Hello everybody, welcome to the official live cast of the Group O third round match between Andri and his Imperial Nobility up against Gogo Bay with his Dark Elves. I can show you the league table to uh, see what's going on. Uh, Gogo Bay has definitely won the group, whatever happens. And Andri may qualify. He needs to win 2-0 or winning and scoring three touchdowns so winning 2-0 is more likely than 3-2 right with imperial ability if he wins 1-0 or 2-1 it won't be good enough um and then if he wins 2-0 he'll have to have a playoff with fez to see who goes through from this group no he's not through 2-0 to get a playoff um and we can look at Andrew's team. He's got six guard. He's got two bludgers and a leader. So this is what I used to favour for an Imperial Ability team. However, now, after watching them in action a fair bit, after watching some knobs in action, I would say block on the Ogre is really, really strong and just try to make three dice blocks with him continuously is how you win the game. Uh, this actually probably is my preferred Dark Elf roster. The Christopher Bengston build. We've got four Bludge um, Blitzers, a Wrestle Witch, and a Dodge Assassin. That gives you three rerolls and an Apple. I actually really like this build. Um, the reason that I didn't play this was I, I would like this for you know normal games of Swiss. If you're trying to win a tournament in tabletop, I like this. Um, the reason I went with a two reroll, more durable build for this tournament was, I figured, uh, you know, the games could go to overtime in the knockout stage. So, um, and like draws are okay, right? So I thought my team was a more droid team than this, which is why I didn't go with it. But I do think this is better for like, you know, getting a win in normal time. I really like this build a lot. So uh, that's that. And uh, I can also tell you a little bit about the coaches, when I say a little bit, I really mean a little bit. Go Go Bay is Canadian, qualified through the G O B B L N uh, World Championship qualifier. Andre is Spanish and qualified through the Season 3 official playoffs. There you go. And hello, I can tell. Cliff needs more knob off. Yeah, there would be a little knob off if. Uh, if if Andre can win two 0 Oh, officious ref makes a couple of stuns, which is sad. For it looks like Gold Gold Bear was going to uh, Daka, right? But that stun has maybe made him rethink that. Because it would be get absolutely ganged out to oblivion, wouldn't it? Is the problem. <laughs> yep, yeah, Andrew's a very good coach. Um, I invited him to Super League, but he was too busy with all of the his other blood ball like commitments. Um, so, top player. What he hasn't done well though in this tournament is he's picked the wrong race. He has chosen Imperial Nobility rather than anything else. <laughs> um, so there you go. So that's a bit of a he's made a bit of a mistake there, hasn't he? You can't, you can't drop the uh, NAF format out. Come on, man. Yeah, seeding, seeding the ladder and playoffs is not a bad idea. I mean, you you can't drop res. You can't drop res. It doesn't have to be NAF. It could be a few more skills than that. It could be a few more skills than that. What we could do is, I could, uh, I could experiment with more skills than NAF in Super League, and I could say to them, look, 
you know, NAF is normally like about 1300. And uh, I could be like, look, this is what a 1400 team uh, res looks like, you know, or 1500 res. And that could be a. Uh... <laughs> it wouldn't be shit, Crystal, but it'd be better. It would be better. 1400 res would be better than 1300 res. The reason that you can't do on tabletop is just the logistics and history. That's all it is. All right, knobs, yeah. Like, that's the thing. That, 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 it just is the way it is, and that's the way it's always been. That's the only reason it, 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 tabletop is like it is. Not because six skills is ultimate blood bowl at all. It's just literally what works in a tabletop tournament. That's the entirety of why people play tabletop to this level, this standard thing. Um, but anyway, there was an instant apple there on this KO. Now he's got to stop it getting fouled, which is a little bit tricky. Yeah, leaving the witch open was a bit, uh, a bit spicy. I mean, you know, he had the footy power, which was uh, a bit lucky. But there you go. It's gone forever. Diced. I'm sure you'll be able to get it off somebody for like five hundred pound, Jimmy. I like this guy. Actually, do you know what? I don't, I don't hate the half dacker with dark eyes. Uh, this is Imperial Nobility, Amberino. It's like if humans were a bit rubbish, this is what they'd be. <laughs> a bit more rubbish, yeah, okay, okay. No, yeah, like, I, I mean, I agree, I completely agree with him trying to get Lucky Blitz in the Witch. I would, do, I would definitely would have, end, you know, tried not to expose the Witch there, for sure. <laughs> sorry, Dimmy, I'm sorry. I know the truth hurts, I can't lie to you. Wow, interesting. I thought he'd have uh, dodged away the guy who's going to get surfed first, even though it's a 3 plus. Fails it. At least he's not surfed. <laughs> Educate his head. Nobs OP. Um, yeah. Yeah, if you like. <laughs> <laughs> Dimmy himself said, I know they're rubbish, I just say it as a meme. Can you believe that? <laughs> Nobs OP. They do get a big package, but... The boga, the boga's pretty good, yeah. The boga's pretty good. The problem is the underlying team is just, it's just not that good. You know, not when you compare it to like lizard men, necro, dark elves, wood elves. I mean, humans aren't good enough either, right? Yeah, if they could all have bows, they would be better. Yeah, yeah. big package knobs. You got it. They seem quite miserable to dacker against. <laughs> Looking at this, I'm thinking maybe don't dacker if I get drawn against one in the uh, in the competition. 
this does look a bit miserable I mean only a bit to be fair it's still there's a bit of a gaping hole over here isn't there the gaping hole It's a lot of dice rolled. A lot of dice to roll. Decent pressure from Andre. No, so this is I don't know. I don't know how. You know, you're saying not familiar with Blood Bowl three. Are you familiar with Blood Bowl tabletop? So how tournaments work on tabletop is you get about you can choose about six or seven skills or something to give your team like primary skills basically so um these are all gain skills so the the el the elves get like what, five dodge and a wrestle they get six skills whereas the knobs get six guard two dodge and a leader so they get nine skills and they get more money as well to spend on their team. Five guard. Five, yeah, six guard. Yeah, six guard. <laughs> yes, they are. Yes, with Swiss. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, so that, that's like... So this... I think it's good. Like, as much as I don't think tabletop tournaments are the be all and end all of competitive blood bowl like blood bowl tabletop attendees think they are um or tend to think they are i think it is good that it's a format that is you know people are familiar with and tend to think that about rightly or wrongly they tend to think that about this format um so i think that's a good thing God damn it, am I just not allowed to speak? <laughs> I don't like ma marking the ogre here. <laughs> Is he listening? <laughs> I don't like marking the ogre. Okay, then I won't. <laughs> Obviously, he saw something himself, didn't he? They decided to change. Yeah. No, I mean the the thing is, it's ju it's just it's it's. So what happened was, I've told this before. Probably shouldn't tell it again, but I'm, you know, didn't like the reroll there really. Um, Dimmy's going to hate me for speaking, but there you go. Um, <laughs> there was a tournament in 2002 or something, or 2003 or 2004, whenever GTA 3 was out, because I remember playing that the night before the tournament. By the way, GTA, GTA 3 blew my mind <laughs> at the time. And... Uh, no, this was the first ever Blood Bowl tournament, Dimmy, and it was a Warhammer World. And what they did was, they had, after each game, you gave your team a skill. And that was pretty cool, right? Because it was like, it mirrored the development of a real team, right? That was a good idea. And then, so then when you played like the sixth game, you had five skills, because you'd given a skill every game. And then basically, that was what set in motion this concept of NAF style having about six skills for each team because then you know other people ran their own tournaments and then said well let's just start with all six skills and stuff and and all this kind of thing so so it was just basically this guy's free isn't he mm. can't really hit the ball though it's just a one d isn't it oh hits the hits nails the assassin gets the full pow doesn't follow though. He 
doesn't follow. Um, so yeah, so that was basically it, right? So as then like you know, other tournaments were like, well, let's have a you know a skill before every game, and then they were like, no, oh, five or six, and so all of the uh, all of the tournaments were like just they all built off that, and they all went like about six skills and stuff. Yeah, chaos were horrendous. Yeah, I mean, in chaos is still horrendous, right? But even if you give them all their skills at once, they're still terrible. And that, and that's it. So then it just it just went from there. And then eventually, you know, over time with the naff and everything, that's what kind of people settled on was this six skills game. But it was just it, it was all built off the very first tournament, just randomly, and and you know the limitations of playing a game in real life. Tabletop logistics is why it is like it is. Not because anybody thinks it's the best way to play a blood ball. You know? Just is what it is. Oh. That looks pretty open up here now, doesn't it, with that last move? I'd, I'd like to surf this blitzer, but now... That's tempting up there. Let's see what he does. Hello, Mrs. Fez. Yeah, this is critical. This is critical for Fez. Um, if Andre wins this game 2-0, then he will have to have a playoff with Fez. If he wins it um, by three... If he wins and scores three touchdowns, Fez is out. That's how it works. I don't know, Dimmy. I don't know if if Fantastic Ball will ever happen. But you know, because the limitations of tabletop, then um, then I'll probably do the same as most of the tournaments, right? But Super League, we could have a few more skills. <laughs> if only I did, Dimmy. If only I did. Oh, sorry, you meant yourself. Oh. Yeah, of course. <laughs> this seems a really good situation for the Dells, right? Like, they're down a player, sure. But, like, everything's, like, in field and dispersed so this should be pretty pretty simple to go somewhere and do something yeah absolutely I'll, like like do you know what, I mean? what i'm saying i'm not saying that tabletop's bad in any way it's just what i'm saying it hasn't like you know it hasn't been scientifically uh you know it hasn't been built for the purposes of being competitive right it's just be, it's been built so that the tournaments can happen. As it is, they are fine, right? Like it, it does work out being okay. The better players will usually win. Oh my goodness! He does re-roll down to one re-roll already. Really sucks for the Delves. I honestly didn't like the uh, the early re-roll they did. Like the one day, I didn't like the one day, and I didn't like the re-roll of the one day. I like this using uh, the down player as part of the screen. It's quite good, isn't it? So he's got a dodge. It extends the screen. He's either got a dodge or jump over it. So it's keeping it as a three plus. Oh. Having said that, <laughs> he then rolls a two plus to not do that. I mean, jump over is the same as a dodge, Dimmy. You keep you keep wanting people to jump over things like it's any different to a dodge. <laughs> <laughs> you can dodge through a screen. Nope, KO'd. <laughs> it's not higher skill level. <laughs> exactly the same. <laughs> there are times when, you know, there'll be good spots for... for Jumps. This isn't one of them. This isn't one of them. But there are there are times when there's there's good. 
there's good jump moves available. Yes, yeah, fantastic for Gold Gobe. Like, really, really, all he has to play for here is, like, practice, right? Tournament practice versus a really good player. Um, if Andre had picked a better team, I'd rank him as one of the favourites for the tournament. But he is on Imperial Nobility, which is why he finds himself on one point after two games. And you know requiring a two touchdown like he has to chase the daka here right he might even think that sitting back is the better way to beat the daka but he has to chase the daka because he has to score two touchdowns to win <laughs> there you go expert yeah you know so and to be fair to score i, I don't value the jumps to score so much, right? Because if people are looking to score, they'll see those jumps, right? The ones that just come from, like, random open play ones that let you, like, you know, complete a screen or whatever, they're, they're kind of hard at the spot. Whereas I think if someone's looking for a score, they think, can I jump? But I think, like, just, you know, normal open play, then people will miss jumps that can uh, be quite good. I lost a game at an FC once as well. Uh, no, I probably lost two at an FC. UK, TC, I lost a game. Tragedy. Can't remember who, not Devil. I beat Devil. <laughs> yeah, Zons with Roxy, what a dirtbag. What a dirtbag, Roxy Zons. Blah. I lost a game at Nafsi versus Purple Goo. That's one of them, and then I lost another one later on. Yeah, I think I will. I think I will with Super League help, yeah. On the other hand, it's quite good that it's table. Like, it's good that it's tabletop. Like, this is good that it's tabletop as well, right? Because, you know, tabletoppers can watch it and be like, ah, this is like what we play. So that's good. <laughs> UKTC was uh, myself, obviously, and my team was. In order of how well known they are, I guess is Enzone, Malmere, and PW, which is pretty good. Um, Enzone, at one point, was pretty famous on Fumble, one of the best Fumble players, but he hasn't played for ages. Uh, Malmere, of course, is pretty famous on Fumble, won loads of majors, and uh, won Black Box Trophy a few times, and Purple Chest rates Malmere I think number one, certainly very, very highly in his little uh, personal rankings list. And then Pete W is an absolute legend, tabletop and England and fumble and everything. And he's really, really, really good. An average one, yes, Elp, yes. <laughs> I mean, that's obvious in a way, right? Because the tabletop players, on average, are more casual than video gamers, right? Because you've got the whole hobby aspect, modeling, painting, etc., etc. So you get a whole different kind of thing there, right? And you get a different experience and you get like people playing a lot less games on tabletop. Whereas, uh, online you've got people like Daedle playing a hundred games in a month <laughs> yeah it is Dimmy yeah hero clicks hero clicks Pokemon but anything as long as it's painted green yellow and black is good <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tell you what, speaking of painting green, yellow and black, these, these purple uh, purple guys, I really like the purple on these uh, 
tells. He's got basic cheerleaders though. Andre also. Andre has a basic sideline. He has not customised his team at all. They're the unpainted, unpainted knobs. Andre, very sad. Oh, and Gogo -Go Bay has unupgraded staff. Yeah, but at least he's painted his team purple. A pretty purple. I mean, this looks really good. It's weird. It's weird because he's two players down and he's got nowhere and it's turn six. But, like, even though these guys are trapped, it seems good to me that the knob team is, like, you know, all around the field. That seems like you should just be able to carve them open at some point. Hello, Ceremol. Um... <laughs> it sounds bad when I say, did you see the bad news um, for you? <laughs> that uh, Gabias ended up pulling out of the tournament, but because Slade Black Mage has the head-to-head -head versus you, he got the uh, he got to go through from your group. I don't know if you knew that, but if you did know, there you go. Yep. Yep, I kind of can't believe you didn't either. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is there. There is one, isn't it? Reading the rules, there was. A, I think there was a few people who didn't read the rules. To be honest, I think there were a few people who didn't read the rules. But. <laughs> the team is being played drawn at random. <laughs> they weren't. Um, yes, he. I think he just sees something in them that others don't. I mean, not re right. This is what I thought. I thought about this team, um, not for this tournament, but for like Euro Bowl, as if I had to build a team for Euro Bowl. This is what I would have built. Uh, the leader, two blodgers, six guards. You get six guards. Six guards is good, right? Six guards is unquestionably good. Guard is a really good skill. This build lets you get six guards. It also gives you two blodgers. Blodgers are really good. So it gives you some things that are good at, in Blood Bowl. But the problem with it is it's still knobs. And the base that you're, you know, building on is bad. <laughs> so I can see why he did it. I can see why he did it. But, yeah, this is good. And it's a good player from Andrew. He's a top player. Top player. But... You know, just going to take some twos and stuff and uh, go, go, Bale will be alright. Though scoring's going to be a bit tricky for him. He's only got two turns to score and he's just brought back one of his scoring threats. So, he's going to have, what, this guy around midfield and, and this guy if he gets the two plus away at the end. Yes, it does. It does feel like that as well. Also, the, I mean, the Russians, right? The Russians went uh, Bright and Diamed both went with the exact same build. Necromantic with uh, only one wolf. So, you know, there was that. <laughs> Not a conspiracy, is it? I could have talked to KFOG and... Uh, made a better decision than what I did do about what to play, I think, but never mind. I still think Dark Elves are fine. I still still think my team is fine. But yeah, maybe I should have taken what else. This is the knob group, yeah. Hello BB no, this is the knob group. Um we've got at the moment Andrew's on one point. 
Go Go Bay is on six. Go 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 Bay has definitely won the group, so he's got no worries this game. Um, and he really is forgetting to just stand this guy up. <laughs> there we go, and then dodge this one to there. I mean, I guess you could come down to here or something. Or just stand up, that seems. Not what I would have done. Um... <laughs> Hello, the peg. Yep, yeah, this is uh, this is a little bit little bit too deep, right? If he was Skaven, this would be fine, because he'd still just shoot up the field in two turns. But this is a little bit not good for Dark Elves. The camera is on the right side. He's he's dackered, but he's forgotten to go. Uh, he should have gone, you know, two or three turns ago and didn't. Oh, really? Azuin was the biggest knob in the world, yeah. But that was why you said they were all Pete, wasn't it, Dimmy? So I guess you're kind of proving your point by drawing a lot. Who we'll gets the AV break? Yeah, and puts him in there. That was really nice, wasn't it? Because it stops, stops both of them hitting them. I really He doesn't need to get it this next turn, he can just move it forward like four squares, right? Side. And I really like dodging him either either back there or there. First things first is move this guy like four up here or whatever, or four over there, four somewhere. Unless you're going to give the ball to him this turn, which you don't need to, so you probably shouldn't. Knobs need 2 nil, yeah, so he absolutely had to pressure the Dakar. He absolutely had to pressure the Dakar. Andre might might have read the rules, <laughs> which is basically a superpower in this tournament. <laughs> the problem with not following here was that this guy is now free just to assist here, right? If he wants to put it in, but well, he doesn't. This is a. I mean, he's in a bit of a pickle. He could just jump, couldn't he? He could just jump. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Lob it. Run away. Score. Like he could pass to this guy this turn or something, but it doesn't seem very good. <laughs> Four league games in someone cats. <laughs> It actually is the minus, uh, minus one pass right now, right? So he could go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it's six squares away. So he could um, he could do a five plus pass, which isn't great, is it? And a four plus leap. It seems pretty terrible. I think he's going to do a three plus dodge with a ball. Oh, no, he's going to dodge with him. 
<laughs> and he only pushes him, re-rolls it, gets the both down. Oh, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, he's out of re-rolls. The knobs have closed him down. Strangled him. Rolls a one. Sort of doing a dacker, yeah, not a very successful one either. <laughs> oh, he's failed. <laughs> oh, flip me. Well, the blodger is there, ready to pick up the ball for the knobs. Unbelievable, Jeff. I mean, it was hard. It was a hard. It was a hard throw, to be fair. It, this is a 4 plus, and then the throw was a 5 plus, so it was pretty brutal. But if he wasn't going to throw it, he should have got that guy forward four squares. <laughs> he could 4 plus Ogre pick up it. But uh, I think he'll try and get the blocker on it. Probably just not even activate the Ogre, right? Make sure it keeps its tackles on. We could be in Fez's nightmare, yeah, yes we could. We could indeed be in Fez's nightmare. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter at all to Gorgo. <laughs> He's won the group whatever happens. Um, something like that, Dimmy. Something like that. <laughs> I don't know exactly. Don't put me under pressure. If Andre wins two, no, it's a tie break, yeah. If Andre wins three, he'll, I mean, he's not going to win three. Andre would qualify if he scored three, but he's not going to score three, is he? Yeah, 2 0 made to the tie break. Just goes in. Fair enough. The, even with even like you know with no re rolls, the elves could just roll some dice there, right? So I quite like Stopping them rolling some dice. Both KOs come back. For the L's. They've got a one turn chance versus <laughs> versus uh, an ogre. <laughs> Which needing four pushes against an ogre isn't great, is it? Um, yep. Yeah. No re-rolls versus an ogre. Um, or maybe, maybe this guy. Maybe, maybe, maybe four, four, two, and then hit this guy, and then frenzy him in, and then do it that way. So it's really hard, though. Well, I mean, yeah, he, he can't, he can't push the stand firmly. So yeah, that's why. Just the old guys. <laughs> it's all there is to work with. Maybe Frenzy the Blitzers. Ooh, Iron Man. Oh, we could make the Witch Elf or the Assassin armor 19 plus. Make the Witch Elf 9 plus. That's one thing about the knobs, they do stand firm. Blitzing him, was it? It's 
It's gotta run away. <laughs> it's gotta run away. He could have given the blitter on the LOS plus AV, right? And then, like, try to make him the guy who's always in the way, getting hit. But, I mean, I like just giving it to the champ. Way. Hey. This is, it's not a nightmare for Fez, is it? But it's not what he wanted. <laughs> because this makes the 2-0 for Andre look at least achievable. I wouldn't say it's likely yet, but it's possible. Full power. Has. Didn't run away far enough, mate. <laughs> That's why he shouldn't have blitzed this guy, right? He blitzed. Like, you know, sorry. Like, I guess it's good for Go Go Bear, right? It's good for Go Go Bear because he learned that it wasn't worth blitzing a reserve. Like, somebody who's got 13 players, it was not worth blitzing that guy and exposing this guy to get three dice by Mighty Blow, right? So. Good lesson, good lesson learned for Go Go Bear. Um, bad for Fez, <laughs> but good for Go Go Bear. <laughs> it's so it, the jump. It depends. It's both how many are are you jumping from and how many are jumping to. So the jump away from those two players would have been a four plus. Um, but like if you're just jumping over a dead body in the open, it's a two plus for elves. It's like it's an agility roll, um, but you minus them from jumping, whichever has the highest between the square you're going from and to. Um, so yeah, so it's it's absolutely two nil will make Fez and Andre equal. If somehow Andre can score a third, like win three one, that would be even better for him because then he'd just go through. But um, or 3 2, he would just go straight through and 3 2. But, um. Will he try to score fast to get the third TD? That's the question, right? That is the question. I think it's going to be hard for him to score the second touchdown. So. Um. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe, Kentucky. Maybe. It's interesting. It's interesting. Super interesting. He probably has to just go for the 2 0, right? Because if he, if he wins 2 1, he goes out. And he's against Dark Elves. So he probably just has to try and stall this out for 2 0. Realistically. Yeah, a 2 1 meaning he's out means he shouldn't. Probably shouldn't try for the third, right? Should just try and stall this out for a two nil win. But Dark Elves will get in the way. Yes, thank you, Soku, yep. Yeah. Yep. Nobs are winning, yes, yes. Um, Nobs, you know, looking to win two nil and have have a, have another tiebreak game. We'll have another knob off. If Andre wins this two nil, we'll get Andre versus Fez, and we'll get another knob off. Nah, I just I think it's too dangerous, Jeff. I think it's too dangerous. Dells are too good. I mean, he might do it, but I think it's uh, I think it's too dangerous. He shouldn't do it. 
but he might not think it's too dangerous and he might go for it, right? Who knows? So many knobs. Does he? Oh, he does re-roll it. Wow, that's interesting. I would, I would have been quite happy with that fail, personally. Personally, I mean, not happy, but you know, what I mean, I wouldn't have been bothered by it. Oh, I guess, I guess the play to break through is this guy assists and then you blitz there right and then you can just move through everybody yeah actually this is horrendous for andre okay yeah he had to okay so well i think that's a mistake from gogo bear i think the play was this blitzer here blitz this guy power him and then everything through the gap whole team through this gap all of gogo bear's team could have been here and then uh, Andre is screwed. <laughs> but he didn't. He didn't go for that. He probably should have done um, just for the practice, right? Because just playing passively, anyone can just play passively, right? You don't need. That's like nothing special at all. So maybe he should have, uh, you know, scored just as a bit more practice, you know, like trying to get the turnover. See what happens. Like the DACA, right? Practice a DACA versus all uh, versus knobs. It doesn't matter if it doesn't work. So, like, really, Go Go Bear should just be using this as practice versus a good player. Rather than, uh, necessarily trying to win as, as bad as that sounds for Fez <laughs> though I do think the best way to win was have like four players here or five five players in here maybe even more Hello, Pirate Bear. Because he just hasn't, you know, he can't, he couldn't cage with these two players. He could have tagged him, and then he could have had like four or five players in here, and then there's just no players for Andrew to cage with. This is fair, like, you know, he doesn't have to go for the ball or anything. I mean, well, he's 1-0 down, so... He can't just screen off and lose 1-0. I mean, he can, but, like, <laughs> screening off and losing 1-0 doesn't do anything for you, right? Like, you have to turn him over to, to even draw this game. Different if it was 0-0. Then you can play completely passively and get a 0-0 draw. And then win the, like, the second round of the... Uh, of the elimination match, right? But at 1 0 down, you just have to turn him over. So, yeah, I think that was definitely the play last turn. Could come in the back for a stab. <laughs> it's not bad, is it? Well, the side even three, four, five, six, seven. Stab him. Smashed by an ogre. <laughs> Don't hurt him. Three dice block. Yep, this is this is rough. 
roof for uh, Fez. That's for sure. What a thinking for Go Go Bear. Collectively, they've used about half of their time, haven't they? But over half for Go Go and less for Andrew. Just going for the reset turn. Eight players is getting close to undefendable. Well, like conventionally defendable, like it means you'll have to try and do some kind of ball sacking. <laughs> sorry, Fez, sorry. <laughs> This is looking great for Fez because, you know, he, he, he loves knobs. <laughs> is that better? You try the 4-2 out, probably not worth it, right? <laughs> yeah, I like this blitz, this is what I would have done. But who can say if it's good or bad? <laughs> but it is what I would have done. Like, it's only turn three. He doesn't have to get forward this turn. He can reposition the middle. And he can try and hit the weak link. He could have blitzed through here. But, like, he can't get forward through the middle. So there's no real point. So just come back to the middle. Blitz this guy. You get the follow-up hit. You can make a foul if you want as well. This turn. Gets the power. Yeah, like, knobs are at the best, like all World Alliance. Oh, there we go, gets a Kaz. Like all World Alliance, they're, they're at their best versus Elves, because, like, you know, they're still a bash team. So they've got, like, that angle of bash versus dash. They're not just, like, a rubbish bash team, like they are versus bash teams. So, you know, if all World Alliance or knobs are playing Orcs, then they're just like, oh... Well, you're just going to beat us up then. This is nice. And then they lose. But if they're playing elves, they can be like, well, we're just a team that beats you up. So, you know, like, like the Chaos earlier today, right? The Chaos, even though Chaos aren't a very good team in this format, they can just beat up elves. Yeah, they're Bash Light, exactly. Yeah, knobs and all Like humans, right? They really struggle versus the Bash teams, but at least versus elves, they're Bashy enough to make themselves the Bash team. And then, like, the stand firm and the fen can be a little bit annoying, too. Yeah, the two nails looking really good, yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I don't think he can risk the, like, the just, would do, just winning 2-1 puts him out, so I don't think he can score early. But yeah, the two, the two nails looking real good.
and you can just put three stand firm on the on the LOS, right? So. Well, he might not again. He might he might put the ogre on to like defend against the riot a bit more. And it is a three two, but I think we just go down the left, turn the corner a little bit. Can even blitz with a wrestler, right, and just take both down and then go for the foul afterwards. <laughs> Quite reasonable. No, no, he's really going to struggle here. Go, go, bait. interesting I would probably take the push there as well right and then and then put punch him and punch him and punch him and hope to power him but the wrestle wasn't terrible because you could just then gang power him well, we, maybe he should have got the extra assist in for the three dice right because he's got three assists maybe he should have made that a 3d He does, but he can also leave it really open to switch back to the center. I would just do this to get the big fat gang foul here. Would have been my primary reason for going for this. Is to just get a, get another big foul in. But he's not going too big for the foul. Well, no, I guess he can, right? He can just put those two on as well. What's that four assist foul? No, only a three assist foul. Oh, the double ones. Disaster. Argue the call fails. But I mean, I say disaster, there's only six hours, so. <laughs> Probably not really a disaster, is it? Really looks like Jim was right about the uh, splitting the team earlier, just, just quietly. standing in the way like this has really not worked out. Hello kind sir, glorious knobs. But you know if uh, if Go Go Bay can make him roll any dice on turn 16 maybe Andrew will like snake a rush or something and then uh, only one now, you never know. Stalling to lose 1 0 is really weird, though, isn't it? It's a weird thing that people do. And it's weird in this as well because, like, you know, it is only fair to Fez to uh, defend the 1 0 loss in this situation, but. If if Go Go Bay had to draw or win, he should be trying, right, to, to get the touchdown somehow, not just screaming from the start. So it's a weird it's a weird thing. But you often see people in like ladder and everything just you know, they're losing two nil and the heart, like they just try to stop you winning three nil instead of instead of, you know, going after the ball to turn you over to give themselves a chance of the result. It's weird. Weird how kind of like passive people 
can be. Yeah, maybe, maybe, Jeff, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, up four players, up five players. <laughs> I mean, I do like to be in the middle, but yeah, you don't need to be in the middle until like turn 15, right? So, but I would rather be in the middle. I'd definitely rather be in the middle right now. Of course I would. But then if being in the middle means you're back two squares, then maybe you wouldn't rather be in the middle. It is good just being forward. Like, he can just pile forward now, right? He's already in range. He can just, like, pile in in relatively safety. Relative safety. Oh, we're counting, we counting the knobs as well. Okay. <laughs> I wouldn't really count knobs as full players <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Yes, Soku, yeah. Um, I mean, to be fair, that was because there was, like, match fixing, right? So, and there's lots of money involved. Now, there is money in prize money for this, but there's not, there's not hundreds of millions in TV money for this. <laughs> so, there's a bit of a difference there. Um, but on Saturday... Misspell Tree and Strider and Piebot and Jay Leave have all worked out to play their games, their final game at the same time. So it's a hard thing to like demand of people, right, who are playing this in their spare time, you know, to demand that they uh, schedule at the same time. It's not easy, is it? What has Elp said they could have done? They could have done, they could have just said, you play your first game at these times, or you lose. <laughs> Couldn't they? They could have just said that. But they didn't. Yeah, so he's getting back in the middle now. Yes, the knockout draw will take place on Sunday at 16 UTC, I believe, on Nacon's Twitch channel. Very interesting. Super interesting. This is pretty fine, isn't it?
five players out for the Dells. But yeah, there is one out for the Nobs as well. Wait, two. I missed him dying. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wait, why is it only wait, why is he there? Did he just not play him? Did he just not field his guard player? By mistake. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Send off. He just literally didn't play his guard thrower, right? Oof. I mean, luckily it didn't matter for him because he, <laughs> he just banged out all of the Dark Elves, but that could have been a very costly mistake for Andrew. this guy and get right down here can't he which is pretty good I'd love to get like the full cage there but that might not be you know, might have to power for that Just quad skill. You could just quad skull this block, right? Or you could move the ball first. Safe moves first. Just get the knockdown. Yeah, I didn't. I guess this guy was in the way, right? Because I quite like going one, two, three, four, five, six, and getting him there, and then getting him there as well. So he would have had the two stand firmers there and there. It would have been really good. I mean, he can still get this one really far forward. And it's just easier to hit this one, isn't it? And you, you're closer this way, you're closer to this than this. You're tighter in here, you'd kind of need a power on her to get space, whereas here you've got loads of space. So I think that would be... I don't think he should have gone there without this guy. Like, without these two here and here, I wouldn't have gone that far. So I don't particularly like what Andre's done here. I feel like the ball could be back one, right? And then he could have been there, and he could have just been in a full cage. I don't think this is really better than a full cage. He can 3-3-2 three, three, for one day. Or, in fact, just 3-3-2 three, three, for an assist, and then 3-3-2 three, three, for a one for 2D. Can he? 1-2-3-4-5-6-7... Hmm, rush, rush to hit. So this guy could 3-3-2 three, three, to there, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, rush, rush. And then he goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, rush, rush. Like, it's not great, but he can two dice the ball. Whereas, if he'd just been back in a full cage, he couldn't. Those million dodges, by the way, not that unlikely with with dodge and three rerolls. Well, turns out it's good enough, almost certainly. 
Keeping is... No, he did use it. Let's see. Keeping his rerolls for the one turn seems optimistic. Versus three stand first. But yeah, maybe he doesn't put three stun firm on, maybe just leaves it like this. This is good versus the, the Rhino he does put on, yeah. This is good versus the timeout as well, isn't it? So He technically can blitz this with the uh, Witch Elf, but it's still really hard to get one turn. And he could get a Quick Snap as well, so... There's some ch he's got timeout, he's got quick snap, and he's got blitzing that guy. And there we go, Andrew's fixed that. Probably exactly what he was thinking about. Now he is definitely just reduced to timeout and quick snap. There's only two outs. It's quite, I mean, it's really hard to one turn with Dark Elves anyway, but the best way is three stand firm, right? <laughs> and then uh, if they don't have Juggernaut, and you just shut it down. The problem is, if you put players close, like if, play, if you've got players there, they can like frenzy you back, right? And they can fail, and if they've got sidestep, they can do things like Skaven, whatever. Skaven could score this, right? Uh, Skaven could like, um, and it's hard actually with the Rattlegar. This is pretty good. This is actually pretty good. Oh, well, they've got the Rattlegar, they just, they just blitz this guy. But like, if you had like a Frenzy Dancer, you could blitz this guy back, and like, and then you could fill the squares and then the sidestep forward and stuff. So like, Olivier could one turn versus that, but it wouldn't be easy. Well, there you go. There is the result, 2-0 win for Andre. And sorry, Fares, I did mention it all the way through that game. But that does put Andre on three touchdowns, four, two against, and four points. And when Fares played Andre in the group stage, that was the one that they drew, 1-1. One, one. So, Fares and Andre will play again in a tiebreaker match with overtime enabled to see who goes through as runner-up joining Goal Goal Bay. So, despite losing, congratulations Goal Goal Bay. And, dis you know, despite winning, congratulations, but not through yet, Andre. And thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.